This is Straight Out of Savannah, talking with Tammy, um, talking to my guest, Mark Singer. He is an amazing young man. Um, you will love him once you listen to what he has to say. He does amazing good out in the world. And this is one of the reasons why I brought him on the show, because I know that he's changing the planet. And he has such an amazing, interesting story. So, um, Mark, let the people know who you are and take it away. Okay, thanks, Tammy. Um, yeah, my name's Mark Singer, and I'm from the UK, as you can probably guess by my accent. Um, I'm a professional uh, mindset coach and speaker. But um, as you've just touched on, I have a, a quite a unique and, uh, how can you put it, inspiring or tragic and inspiring i should say story um, which led me to where i am today so yeah um currently i work with people one-to-one -one, but i also do speaking events workshops and group coaching and stuff like that um but really it's my journey which led me here today i'm all through my first book at the moment as well um which is pretty much my story my life story and so yeah i'm I, i'm nice. um, What's the name <laughs> to helen back and then some so, yeah, which is pretty much sums up my life, really. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, look, so, yeah, in a nutshell, I won't go, you know, I could sit here for four hours talking about it, but I'm not going to do that. I mean, uh, basically, <laughs> I had a bit of a different, you know, I, I, my background uh, when I was young, I was in gangs and stuff like that, drugs and all that sort of stuff. And uh, long story short, I got my life sorted, um, but then I ended up in a in a situation. I was working at a car, in a car dealership, and and, uh, and during a Christmas work party, I ended up in a fight, and I I got wrongly uh, convicted of assault, and I ended up getting sent to prison with a life sentence, basically reflective of my past. Even though I hadn't committed that offence, then it was basically I was given a prison sentence with no release date. So uh, even though that was, a, in a way, a miscarriage of justice, you could say, but my karma, because of the karma before, before led me to that position in the first place. So I don't see it as a, a miscarriage of justice on the whole, even though I shouldn't have got convicted of that. However, when I was in prison, I lost all my family quite suddenly and tragically over a very short period of time. And that was literally over seven months uh oh, first gosh. first my mother and then my father well, very quickly uh my mother died of cancer my dad died uh while i was on the phone to him um of a cardiac arrest and all in all i lost in, in one year i lost 31 uh other family family members animals things that i love like my home and stuff like that so 31 different things and he nearly killed me and he crushed me and i did i had an over i took an overdose and nearly died and um anyway I managed to get myself out of uh, prison. I worked bloody hard to get out uh, to prove that I was innocent and prove that I was not just innocent, but I, I wasn't a threat to society or anything like that. Anyway, whilst in there, I started mentoring young kids who had been in gangs and stuff like that. And I sort of realised that I had an aptitude to work with people and get the best out of people. And uh, I also, so when I come out of jail, I started getting coaching myself to deal with all of the stuff that I've been through. Uh, I'd had counselling, I'd had therapy, but none of them were really working for me. So coaching was the only thing that really got, sort of brought the best out of me, started getting me back to where I wanted to be. And then it, it, it just twigged really, because I decided that I wanted to become a coach myself. So I decided to research it. And I looked, I found IPEC, the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching, which is based in America. And they had a top school, basically, uh, I could find. And I invested everything I, like, yeah, into that to become a professional coach. And two years on, I set up my business, started my own business, fully graduated. And now that's what I do. I work with people using uh, the core energy process, which is what they teach you, uh, which helps you remove all the blocks and barriers to success in your life and create the life that you choose and want to experience basically it's without the barriers so i work with clients to basically uh optimize energy in every area of their life so that they're performing at their very best all of the time oh that's awesome that is awesome so let's go back to um the prison sentence yeah so with the prison sentence, i'd rather not thanks but <laughs> so let's well, go back to it <laughs> No, we don't want to go back. <laughs> Funny enough, joking aside, 
guess where I'm going tomorrow? I'm going. I'm actually going back to the prison tomorrow, but this time to coach the two speech. prisoners. <laughs> no, I am doing a speaking event there, but not not tomorrow. Tomorrow's just there's two prisoners who are on the verge of getting out, and they've asked me to go back and coach them. So yeah, it's just random. That so. is powerful. That is powerful. <laughs> So you you yeah. actually know because you're on the other side. That is that, and you exactly. That's side. why, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I've awesome. uh, been through been through it. So when, okay, so when you, um, were you working with a group of people or anybody to get your innocence, or how did that work for you? What whilst in there? Well, I had to basically the type of sentencing. I mean, it's different a lot in America. It's, it's a separate sort of. Uh, way we're sentenced here. I mean, with this sentence, basically, if you've been in trouble before, which I had when I was younger, um, and you get arrested for a similar sort of offence in the in the in, in the in the future, sort of thing, then what they it's, it's now been uh, outlawed. This this sentence, by the way, because it's inhumane. They they were giving it out. It's called an IPP, and it's called it's an indeterminate pu- public protection. And basically what it is, is they, they, they give you a prison sentence with no release date. And uh, you've got a minimum time that you uh, have to serve, but you have to basically demonstrate and prove to them that you're no longer, not only will you not, uh, you, you, that you're no threat to society, but that you're never going to f- offend again. Now, that's pretty much virtually impossible. I mean, how do you prove that you're never going to offend again? You just can't. It's not possible to do that. So as a consequence, there's thousands of people languishing in there who've got no chance again now. And thankfully, about two years before I did get out, uh, the law got changed um, and they they, re- they lowered the, re- the release barrier, uh, uh, threshold so that you got an opportunity to prove that you were able to because i did appeal my sentence when i first went in but they just threw it out they weren't interested and so i know even though i i, I didn't do it they, they, they're not interested so the way you this is another difficult thing i had to contend with is the fact that in order to get out you've got to admit to things that you didn't do and not just admit to it but take uh, full responsibility for it so how do you do that yeah. now the way i did it is because i i sort of took responsibility for the past and my past beliefs my past actions my past um, attitudes so by telling myself and understanding that yes in the past i've done some crap things um had i not done those mm-hmm. then the karma that i put out into the universe wouldn't have come back to bite me now so essentially that's how i saw things because i was telling myself i opened this door to myself because the way i see it in life is you manifest your own reality so if you put it out whatever your thoughts are and when when i ended up in that fight which led me to that prison sentence i was in a bad place psychologically you know i was stressed from work i was pushing myself too hard at work my energy was very low i was not very uh, happy um i was drinking a lot and stuff like that so i wasn't in a good place mentally so that's naturally why I ended up in that scenario. Other, otherwise, it wouldn't have happened. So I took responsibility for my part in that action, but not obviously for the things that I didn't do. But in the end, I had to just basically uh, work my ass off to get out. And by that, I mean, um, you have to do course after course after course after course to show that you're, you know, you're not a danger, basically. So it's, they call them offending behaviour courses here in England um and i had to do i don't even know how many i did in the end about 30 odd and you have to have psychological assessments regularly about every couple of months uh and all of this sort of stuff to uh, to assess whether you're safe to be released basically and after six years i eventually got out and uh so once i got out but to be honest with you but and this is how crazy life is is um after losing my parents and my family that was after two years that actually, in a mad way, helped me because because of the way I coped with it, dealt with it, and showed responsibility throughout that period, rather than going mad, and, you know, doing everything, you know, doing things that were destructive. Mm-hmm. Although I did have an overdose, but I mean, uh, I didn't do anything over the top. It, it was a. Uh, they sort of saw that as the fact that I could take responsibility. You know, I, I was taking responsibility for all of that. 
if I could take, if I could go through all of that and hold it together, then uh, I would do the same on, in society. And that's what's, you know, and I won an award last, uh, no, two weeks ago for, from the um, like local authorities for turning my life around. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. That's powerful. That had to make you feel so good, especially since. It does, but you say that. I mean, I've always had a problem taking, um, what do you call it? Uh, accolades. Uh, like, you know, people compliment me. It's the, it's the uh, you do, you get the imposter syndrome going on in there sometimes. So, yeah, it's something I've been working on that. You know, it's not always, uh, so I don't always feel comfortable with it. And I think that's due to the past. I mean, obviously, you you, you still, you have that element of um, acceptance. You have to accept the past. It's not always easy to accept everything about what happened in the past and your part in that. So I think sometimes when people do say, well done and all of that sort of stuff, you're like, oh God, like that. <laughs> but I'm getting used to it. <laughs> you got to, because the thing is, I know. is, you know, when you receive those things, it does yeah. something to you, right? Yeah, of course. It builds you up, makes you feel, feel much yeah, more confident. Yeah. 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 And not in an yeah. ego sort of way, hopefully. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I mean, way, I mean uh, yeah, well, it's confidence, isn't it? It's about self-esteem. And, and, and exactly that. I mean, because at the end of the day, um, when you've been through what I went through, it, your confidence does take a big kick in. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Um, your self-esteem does as well. So, and what happens is, and this happened to me recently, you block you block off all your emotions to get through it. And as soon as, and I, I had this little analogy on one of my shows the other night because I say, I said, uh, I put all my emotions in a little suitcase and put it away in the cupboard and leave it there. And every now and then I'll go and get that out. <laughs> And a couple of occasions after I got out of jail, you start getting feelings for somebody and then it's not returned or whatever else. And you you get your feelings out, or your emotions out, and then and then you rush to put them back because you're so wary of being hurt again. And I think that's when you when you when you're living, when you've been through that for so long, it's natural for your self-esteem to be quite low. Yeah, because you're, like cause you're constantly yeah. So you're constantly aware of worry not worried as such but uh aware of the possibility that you could get hurt again when yes. you've been through so much hurt or, or loss so yeah so that takes time to heal as well i mean but like i said all of these things the way i'm working at the moment the help i'm helping with other people it's all positive and it's and it's just it's just all moving in the right direction so you can't fail to feel good about that but it's a case of uh you know getting used to it a bit <laughs> Yeah. And then the other thing too is, you know, other people look at us different from how we look at ourselves. Exactly. You know, so totally. like exactly. people see you as this yeah. amazing coach and, yeah. you know, all this kind of stuff, but you don't, you just see yourself as Mark. Do you know what? Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, I've had so many people, friends say that to me. You're so amazing. You're this amazing coach. You're brilliant and everything else. And I'll say, yeah, I can be an amazing coach, but when it comes to coaching me, I'm not that great. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just I a mean, normal guy, you know what I mean? I but mean, that's, why, that's yeah. why coaches have coaches. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and and I've said this to so many people. And, yeah. yeah. I exactly. mean, you think about it. If you were a massage therapist, could you massage yeah. yourself? No, you're right. And it's exactly right. And I've said this to so many friends, <laughs> like, you know, because they don't really understand coaching. And I said, I've got to coach myself. And they're like, Why? You know? <laughs> because we need coaches because everybody who wants to be the best version version of themselves needs a coach and yes. you know that's exactly what they're for <laughs> exactly and we and coaches are no different i tell exactly. people i'm a healer but i have a healer you need you know, it. i got some people that you know i can call and say <clears throat> you know i'm in need yeah it's, it's exactly right and and because we're, we're not perfect i mean you can try and self-coach and i do a lot of the time but um it's not the same it's, it's different when you've got someone else challenging you pushing you uh getting you to th answer you know it's the way you are i mean with me specifically i mean i don't tell people what to think I, I ask them and get them to come up with the answers themselves but it's getting them to think in certain ways uh getting them out of that's that energy that not helping them move forward and and getting them to an energy that does not help them move forward and stuff like that but that's not always easy to do when you're doing it yourself yeah, and uh, right. you know you can know all the tricks in the book but it doesn't doesn't always work like that 
yes oh, yeah. Yeah. yes that's that's the thing it's like as you are able you since you're on the outside it's so much easier for you to see yeah you know what's exactly. going on with other people totally because agree. you're on the outside yeah. and i've always been good at that even before i become a coach to be honest with you tell me i mean I, I i i funny enough i was writing about this in my book earlier for my book earlier um it's something i, I, I identified as an early age that I, I could read people not read people's minds but read people mm-hmm. and understand what made pe- made people tick in those days i used to use it for a negative you know but um but now <laughs> I did. I mean, if someone was a bully or whatever, and they said something nasty about me, I'd turn around and pick pick holes in them until, you know, I could say, well, you're this, that, and the other. But now I use it positively because I use it to build people up and make, empower people, make people feel good about themselves and yes. get the best out of people. So it's using those talents for the better now. So I didn't realise at an early age that, that I was any different to anyone else. I thought everybody could do this, but it's not the case. A lot of people... You know, can't read other people and yeah. situations and stuff like that. Yes, and uh, that's exactly the reason why you get the compliments that you get because <laughs> everybody can't do what you do, <laughs> right? Everybody uh, can't do what you do. I'm getting used to it. I, I mean, listen, I, I'm 46. I, 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 the last time I won an award, I was about what 10 years old. I won an, a bronze award for throwing a cricket ball at school, and in the last two weeks, I've won two awards. One for, nice. turning my li- one for turning my life around and one for, uh, what was the award? Uh, Entrepreneur of the, of the Month. Nice. For a local net- networking group. So they say these things come in three, so now I want another one. <laughs> so, okay, you know. Now you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, hang on. We still, yeah. No, um, it, I, 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 I'm getting used to it because at the end of the day, I'm not going to be happy until I'm at the top of my profession anyway. So, you know, if that's the case, yeah. I'm very determined and driven to, to to be the best I can. And not only me, but help them people become the best they can. You know, I'm quite diligent with that. You know, it's, it's, it's I take, uh, I always say it to clients when I take a new client on, don't commit, don't, we, we won't work together unless you're 100% committed to do the work with me. Because if you're not, there's no point us working together because uh, this is not a half hearted thing. I will get you where you want to be. I will get you there quickly, um, but you've got to do the work. And if you don't, if you're not, because the time, the, the, the need and the timing is is paramount. Mm-hmm. The need is often there, always, but the timing might not be for whatever reason, money, focus, whatever it may be. So, yeah, I, I take a lot of um, care to make sure that the client is in a place at the start of the relationship where they're going to be 100% committed to do the work. Because if they're not, then I'll shake the hand and say, get in touch in a, whenever you are ready, you know, because it's not for me. It's important. And yeah, so, but once they do work with me, then, I, then I'll, I, I work around the clock to get them where they want. Not literally. <laughs> but literally but, <laughs> say no, yeah, no, not like midnight. Yeah. But we're saying that now, I do get calls at midnight sometimes from clients, but I mean, uh, yeah, God knows, just asking questions and stuff. But I mean, uh, but yeah, I will be very, you know, because I, I, it's not just me coaching. You see, I do, I do a lot of work in between. Well, the client does a lot of work, I should say, in between the sessions because they have a workbook. They're learning a whole new philosophy and way of being. They're, they're having to like change things that they've lived their entire life thinking. Uh, so it's not always easy for them to do that. So you need to be very hands on with it and help them every step of the way so that, you know, there's going to be times when they're not going to get it. They're not going to understand it and they're going to get frustrated and everything else. So I have to be there to help them coach them through that. And obviously, um, you know, just help them step by step, bit by bit, build the, the, the mindset that they want. Um, and once they've created that mindset or they started to create that mindset, so then it's a case of literally just creating where you want to go step by step. We work that, that, that road until you get there. And uh, it works. It works. It's literally, uh, it's worked for me because I've had the, I've had the same coaches, uh, IPEC coaches and, and, and using the same process. It certainly, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now if it hadn't been for the coaching, basically. So do you, so. Um, do you coach a lot of um formerly incarcerated people or do no do you know what funny enough tomorrow is the first time i had a a meeting with them no most of my clients are professionals normal people you know just workers uh general uh, 
I, I, I tend not to work, with, you know, when I started out, my message was a bit mixed, I think, my niche. Uh, and I started getting a lot of people who were suicidal and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is not what I work with. And I don't work with depressed people. <laughs> That's therapy. Um, so obviously yeah. I'm not I'm not qualified to do that. Um, so I would have to refer them to uh, to, to whoever. <clears throat> so I had to refine my message a little bit so that people, and again, friends got confused. People would say, well, I haven't got any problems, but if I know anyone who's got any problems, I'll send them to you. And I was like, well, don't, because I don't like to work with people who've got problems. I like to work with people who want solutions. So that's what I want. I don't want the people who are just going to be miserable. <laughs> I want people who want to build something. So um, obviously people are down in the dumps or whatever, but that's different. But um, yeah, so I had to sort of refine my message a little bit. And now I'm sort of, um, I'm working more, more so with people, funny enough, mainly men. And I think the reason I'm, it's not that I only work with men, I work with women as well, but um a lot of men come to me because um, they see someone who's a down-to-earth normal guy who's been through some crap in his life, who's, who's not this sort of university-educated sort of guy who's going to preach to you, but he's going to just listen to you and, and not judge you, not patronise you, and yeah. see you as you are who you are. And that draws a lot of regular guys into me who are maybe feeling they can't go somewhere else because no one's going to, they can't open up to those sort of guys, you know? So I get a lot of that. But there was, regarding the prison thing, um, well, I've been there once before to set up the actual talk that I'm going to be doing, which is going to be in about, I don't know exactly when, it's going to be a month or so. They're, it's down to them to arrange it. But um, tomorrow I'm specifically going back to just have a, a, pers- a one-to-one with two different guys who are on the verge of getting out and a bit a bit up in the air about it. So what I've offered the prison is I said, um, I'm going to offer like any of the guys who do, who see my show, my show, my uh, talk, um, they have the opportunities for two free coaching sessions when they get out of jail. Um, and that will help them get back on their feet for a start uh, and give them some direction mentally. Yes. So I can then help them get some clarity about the direction they want to go and get rid of any barrack blocks that are going on at the time to help them move forward, like fear or limiting beliefs, assumptions, interpretation, anything that's going on that's stopping them seeing things clearly. I can get rid of that quite quickly and then help them then decide which way they want to go in. And I can do that in two sessions. But um, obviously after that, if they want to work with me full time, then it's a different matter. I work at it a three and a half month program with them. That's what I tend to do. So it's not like I don't really work one to one, uh, one session at a time. I do a, a program of three and a half months. And that's overall, it's nine sessions. Plus I do an, an attitudinal assessment at the start of that, which assesses the client's um, energy when they're doing well and their energy when they're under stress as well. And it gives us an insight into where they want to, which areas they want to work on in order to increase uh, and become um, optimize their level of energy in all, in all situations, really. So that's what I do. So overall it works like 10 session, 10 sessions, including the debrief for the attitudinal session. So like I said, I can do one-on-one sessions, just look one at a time. It's not, that I don't do that, but it doesn't really achieve much uh, because if you're helping someone with uh, a long-term philosophy, just having a one-off session, it will increase their energy for that day and then maybe two or three days after, they'll walk away and then they'll be back to square one again because they've not made any in- proper changes. And so I help the client embed that in- that new philosophy so that they're continually doing it and they're always moving forward. I agree. I actually had a discussion with a friend about this very same thing. I said, you know, I said, I'll do one-off sessions, but not often because yeah. they don't do a whole lot. You know, you you, you, exactly. shift, you shift the energy to that minute and that yeah. time. That's it. And then, you know, then they go. Quick out. fix, isn't it? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like uh, you put a Band-Aid on it. Yeah. Here, here's Doesn't the do anything. And go ahead on and go. And then the Band-Aid yeah. comes off and then what happens? exactly see I, I mean my approach is more holistic i mean so you get a lot of coaches out there who might say that like a client will come in and say well i'm looking for a new job 
Um, okay, what we'll do is what, and they'll just go through the basics of that. Look at the surface of it, and they'll say, "Well, we, this is what you need to do to get the new job, and this is how you're going to do it." Blah blah blah. But I won't look at that. I'll look at the reason why you want the new job, mm-hmm. and we'll go beneath the surface, and we'll look at the whole thing, and then we'll. And it's often something that you never even thought of. Um, that's the issue, not rather the job. It's something else, and so on. And again, it comes down to looking at every area of your life. There's like six different core areas. There's like emotionally and mentally, physically, spiritually, um, so, uh, socially, environmentally as well. I can't remember they said that already. Anyway, uh, and <laughs> yes, different places. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, and if those one of that one or more of those areas aren't functioning or f- uh, working for you at any given time, your energy just drops right across the board. And then what happens is, is you, you don't perform at your best at any given opportunity, any, 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 any given area. So learning how to optimize your energy in all of those six core areas gives you the opportunity to then perform at your best all of the time. Because then you work on strategies and plans. So, for instance, like something emotion is not working for you. We'll find out what that is. Then we'll work. We'll break it down into bit by like little bite sized pieces and we'll work around that. So whatever it is we need to do to get your energy back up to the level that you want it to be, we'll do that. And we'll work through that. And we'll start on step-by-step program a, a process to get you there. So firstly, identifying where your energy is low is, is the first step, obviously. But nine times out of 10, if you're doing a one-to-one, uh, like a one-off session with a, co- with a coach, how the hell are you going to do that? You're not. You're, gonna, you're just going to walk away, like you said, with a quick fix, and then you feel good for the day. It's like going to the gym. You'll go to the gym. You feel good for a couple of hours after. You'll go home. You'll sleep, and you'll feel the same as you did the day before. Uh, <laughs> if you want something long term, if you really want to be performing at your best permanently, all the time, in any circumstance, then you really need to invest in a, in a coach and, and 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 a process that works. Yes. Because again, there's coaches out there who are charlatans yeah. who are not and really one that agrees with you yes. yeah you have to you have to have the, the relationship right as well yeah. yeah so but you know it's important that is it really is so if you had um one thing to say uh <laughs> one thing that <coughs> bothers you and okay. not having to do with your business or your life right um what would that be bothers me okay in what in what you uh, mean okay. lowers my energy in some way yeah let me go there. Let, me, let me explain so okay. one of the things that i said when i was asked that question was yeah why do we have to go back in the future and why does everything have to be you know why you got to be riding on horses and all this stuff in the future <laughs> you know we got, i'm talking about like the walking dead and all these shows the apocalyptic <laughs> shows okay you know, why do we have to do that you know, why can't we go <laughs> like the Jetsons into the future, you know, and, and not back in the past? Ah, uh, yeah. I so, get, yeah. I so get, that's yeah. the kind of question I'm looking at, like, you know, something uh, that's happening out here, maybe that you just don't understand. Well, I don't know about I understand. I do. I, th- I think I do understand why. But do you know what not, um, bothers me, annoys me more than anything? Well, it's the, it's the way we live in a world at the moment. And it's, yeah, I think it's the same in America as it is in England. Uh, where you turn the television on, it's just nothing but fear and crap. And yes. it, it drives me mad. I mean, I've stopped watching the news now. I don't watch anything current affairs. All, all the programs I watch are old, old programs or not old programs like you just, but just just happy stuff or, or history stuff or things like that. But I yes. can't watch any of it because it's just hate and anger and this one's having a go at this one and this is a, and it's all fear based as well. And I think yeah. that the, the consequence of that generally um, it, within society is it's creating a very, very, I don't know, I mean, for the people who actually take the time and watch this stuff, uh, fearful society. Everyone's worried about everything all the time. Everyone's scared to be themselves. No yeah. one's no, no one's living their own lives. And I think we're losing individuality in life. And I think people are scared to be themselves these days. And that's that frightens me. Because I think individuality is everything. And uh, we're all unique, amazing people. Um, but we're scared to be so sometimes. And I think that's the that's what frightens me more at the moment when I see the way society is becoming. And um, 
and I blame the media a lot with that. I do. I really, I, not just, you know, I just think it's a long, and I, like I said, it's, it's just the same in, in the UK as it is in America. Where it's just, uh, you know, you turn the telly on, it's just full of divisive stuff and rubbish. Yeah, it's just, mm-hmm. and I'm tired of it, really, to be honest with you. And, and it does drain. There's been times when you wake up in the morning, you feel really happy in a great frame of mind. You'll go and flick the telly on and you're like, like that. Straight away, your energy so, just So dropped. I start. Yeah. it's I horrible isn't it I don't it? even have it yeah I know it's been about what how long now about three or four months since I stopped watching the news and my ever since then I've been happy I, I don't I don't think of it anymore I just I watch the sport I watch the history channel but I don't watch the news it's just not worth it and uh yeah, because it's all there's an agenda isn't there it's just like there's an agenda. and it's all to do with this COVID as well oh. yes <laughs> agreed all right so um, <laughs> um, I hope that answered your question anyway. <laughs> yes. So is there um is there a person that you're looking for? Describe your ideal client. Oh, client. I thought you meant an ideal client. Right. My ideal client at the moment would probably be a man. Um, I do work with women as well, so I wouldn't be, say be put off if you're not, but I generally type I like to work with men who are uh probably in the 30 to, I would say the large range is 30 to 55, but around about the forties is probably what, because a lot of men in their forties feel they haven't got people to turn to. And I work with a lot of men in that age group who may not feel comfortable working with people from a certain background and who may identify more with someone who's been there, seen it, done it and lived that lifestyle and feel that they're not going to be judged, not be patronized and who basically want to get, somewhere in life and give up uh, just existing and start actually living their lives that sounds powerful all right so let the people know where they can connect with you yeah okay so um you can connect me with me on well i do a live show every wednesday on facebook on my mark singer coaching and it's by the way uh, just in case anyone gets it uh, wrong my name is spelled (laughs) m-a-r-c so it's mark singer coaching um on Facebook. Uh, you can watch my show there live every Wednesday. You can also get me on Instagram. I'm on also, I'm on um, LinkedIn, I'm on YouTube, uh, I'm on TikTok. I'm on all of those. Um, or you can just contact me directly. And um, my de- my um, address there, or email address, I should say, is contact at Mark Singer Coaching and Dot Solutions. So you can contact me there. And if you want to book an appointment, feel free to contact me and I will get in touch with you. Awesome. Awesome. So Mark, (laughs) this has been a pleasure. I've truly enjoyed this interaction. It's been Um, a pleasure. I'm super grateful that you've decided to come on the show because this has been something because um, what you do is so needful. You know, we need people that understand the culture of um, prison because that's a whole nother culture and we need people to understand that and that can translate and help you know people to um, move forward from that you know because you you have a lot of people that are like you they've taken it and they've run with it and they've moved forward and done things you know in their life I said then you have some really bright people in there yeah. That's the sad thing. There's some very intelligent kids in there. Kids who have been in there since they were 13, 14. You know, yes. there's so much to offer life. So yeah. Exactly. And that that's I mean, that that's powerful because when I saw your story, um, mm. I actually found you on Facebook. Did you? <laughs> I did. I was like, oh my God, I think I saw one of your Wednesday things. And I was like, oh I'm my God. I'm pleased you did. <laughs> right? I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was, I said, you know, I said, he needs, you know, to get out there because people need him. You know, he needs to be seen because people need what you have. You know, hopefully a a few more people will come to me because of this as well. I mean, I, I you know, like I said, I hope so. The thing is, is you've got, just like you said, you've got, you know, people that, especially men that have gone to prison when they were young and they've been in prison like all their life almost. And then they want to let them out and they have no idea, you know, even about yeah. the world and things like that. No, because even, even two or three years, it makes a massive difference. Never mind a life yeah. sentence. I'll tell you. Yes, it's massive, yeah. Exactly. So I'm super excited, you know, and I'm, I'm super grateful for the work that you're doing. Thank and you. I'm so grateful that you decided to come on here and just talk about it because, you know, a lot of people don't know 
about what it is that you do. And a lot of people probably are looking for you is what I would gather. Because especially, I think that maybe even like prisons should think about, you know, bringing you in and letting you come in and coach these guys right before they get out. I'm going to see if they pay me tomorrow. If they pay me to do it, I'm happy to do it. That's what I was going to <laughs> no, say. No, I'm doing it voluntary, to be honest with you. I'm doing it, I'm joking. I'm, I'm doing it voluntary, but, you know, if, if, if it would be a good idea long-term, definitely. I because, think so. Um, like you said, there's a lot of people in there who need it and would a benefit. A lot of people you know. would benefit. And I think it would be something that, you know, the prison system should should think about and should take no, up agree, and say, yeah. hey, you know, we're going to have this guy to come in and talk to our people that are leaving and all that you know, if they really cared about um, recidivism and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So. And um, yeah, well, let's see. Hopefully that will come about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that for you. Yeah. So again, thank you for joining me. We're going to get off here. Mark, it's been a pleasure. We'll definitely have to continue to connect and do some other things. Definitely, 100%. Um, I have some some stuff in mind that, that came to me and I'll actually get it to you. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tammy. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I've loved being on the show. So thank you very much. I'm straight out of Savannah. Thank you so much, and it's been our pleasure. Bye now. Bye bye.